Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Ripley here. Um, we're going to go over the rest of the information from chapter two today, and that has to do with graphs of data. So now, not only have we organized the data using our frequency distribution, if we look back here real quick, let's look at the pretty one. That's a pretty one right here. This is my frequency distribution. But now we're not only going to organize it, but we're going to we're going to graph it. We're going to be able to present this to people and and uh, manipulate their minds. God, we hope not, but you never can tell. The first of the graphs, and probably the most important because it comes directly from the frequency distribution, is called a histogram. It's this guy over here on the left. These are example of, of examples of histograms. They look like bar graphs, but they're not, they're a very specific type of bar graph because the histogram comes directly from the frequency distribution. If you look at this one, this one's a little bit blurry. Sorry about that. Um, what you have here is you have some numerical values, and then up here you have the frequency values. This one's a lot easier to see what's going on. Again, this was th this is our quiz. So if we were to look at, so let's say that I gave a quiz to, let's see how many people we we d took this test. All right. Well, let's let's get our brain wrapped around this first. What are we looking at? We're looking at quiz scores. These are scores down here. Okay. And then these are the number of people that made that score. Now, we could easily transfer this graph into a frequency distribution if we wanted to. It'd be really simple. Okay, They just chose to have their class widths be 1, which you can tell by looking at the graph. So look, it looks like one person got at or below a 4. It looks like, which that kind of violates the rules about frequency distributions because they're supposed to all be the same width. We don't know if this person got a 4, a 3, a 2, a 1, or a 0, but for the sake of argument and to be clean, let's say that they got 1. So this per there was, or excuse me, one person got a 4. Appears as though two people got 5s. Looks like five people got 6s. Looks like five people got se uh, five people got 7s as well. Looks like, what, 11 people got 8s? Uh, three people got nine, and how many people got the ten? Looks like a five as well. And that's kind of useful information because look at it. We can tell how many people took the quiz. Looks like what n equals thirty-two. Let me double check that though. Let's see. There's uh, fifteen, twenty-six, thirty-two. Yeah, so thirty-two people took the quiz just by looking at the histogram. So it's a really useful graph to be able to pull stuff out of. All right, now I'm going to show you real kind of down and dirty, quick and easy, how to make a histogram. It's not going to be the prettiest thing in the world because I don't have the ability on this, this tablet to make things beautiful. But um, there are lots of other ways. I'm going to show you with your calculator how to do them as well. Okay, so we're going to take our frequency distribution and we're going to turn it into a histogram. And it's pretty simple to do. Well, let me show you a couple of tricks. All right, first things first. I'm going to put my frequencies here. And I'm going to put, whoa, down here, sorry. I'm going to put, wow, that's terrible. <laughs> I told you I wasn't great with this thing. There's got to be a little app where I can have it draw as straight as I want. You'd think as a mathematician I'd be better drawing straight lines. Okay, first things first, I'm going to put a 123 or 113.5 here. Now, there's a little trick in <clears throat> statistics, or excuse me, in graphs, and sometimes you'll see it on a graph. You'll see this little, almost like a little tilde there. It means that scale is not preserved. So, in other words, the distance from here to here is not 113.5. All right, so we'll put 113.5, 123.5. It appears as though I went over what? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. I am going to try and preserve scale. This is 1, 133. That's just terrible. I'm having a heck of a time with my tablet today. Sorry, guys. This is 133.5, 3, 143.5. Again, down at 30. 153.5, 1, 163.5, and then over here to 173.5. Okay? And then all I'm going to do, if, if you recall, let's make this, what was my biggest value? If I cruise over here, I think it was an 8, wasn't it? Yeah, my biggest was an 8. I started a 2. Okay, so i got to go, let's see, how far up do I have to do? I'm going to go, oops, I'm going to go, well, let's make it 2. Let's make it 4. Let's make it 6. Let's make it eight. If I wanted, I suppose I could count all the way up, but you'll get the point. All right, so now all I do is I use my frequency distribution, and I'm going to build this sucker out real quick. 
I've got two, three, five, eight, six, four. Let's see if I can remember that. Let's see if the old brain's working. So for the weights between 113.5 and 123.5, it was two. So I just build this guy up right here. For the weights between 123 and 133.5, it was three. Now my pen may act a little funny here. That it was five. So I'm going to do that guy right there. Two, three, five, and then it was eight, wasn't it? So eight. There's that guy right there. And then there was six. And then there was four. I guess it is kind of filling those in. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Let's double check just to make sure I'm not crazy. Let's see. Two, three, five, eight, six, four. Perfect. And that is our histogram. And if we wanted to, we could get all kinds of fancy schmancy with it. We got weights here. All right. Uh, you could you could color it in, you can fancy it up, but look at this. Look at how much easier it is to really start to get an idea for what. Remember that NV uh, DOT? D <laughs> I just did Nevada Department of Transportation. Me <laughs> Remember CV? Sorry, you a little punchy. CV DOT. I can, but just by looking at that histogram, I can figure out where the center is. I know what the variation is. I know what the distribution looks like. I can determine whether or not they're outliers. And for that problem, we don't really need to, to concern ourselves with time. So if I look at this bad boy, center's going to live, I don't know, somewhere around here, right? Uh, the variation, eh, somewhere between 113.5 and 173.5. Uh, what else do we have there? We've got the distribution. Well, it's sitting right in front of us. Doesn't appear to be any outliers. There's not any crazy values, you know, way up here that are just sitting all by themselves. And then time we don't have to worry about. One last thing that I want you to notice about the histogram is notice that the bars bump up against each other at that 0.5. Remember how we split that difference. It's impossible for a data value to be in both sets at the same time, but it protocol says we just, convention says, really, we just have to, to run these guys right up against each other. Okay, so that's a histogram. Let's go on and do another, another graph, shall we? So I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence or waste your time, so I'll go through the bar graphs that you see nine zillion times really quickly, but some we're going to spend a little bit of time on. Uh, the first of these is the bar graph, standard issue, rank and file. You can do them vertically. You can do them horizontally. You've got, you do the paired. I don't have any idea with that. And lacking information, I don't know what the green and the, the red mean. We got months down here. We got frequencies up here. So who knows? But we've, I think we're all pretty familiar with bar graphs. Notice that these, <clears throat> excuse me, these differences don't butt right up against each other. See that? There's a gap right there. There's a gap right there. And that really is what distinguishes a bar graph from a histogram. You'll see bar graphs all over newspapers. USA Today is famous for their graphs, so we should be pretty familiar with them at this point. All right. Next, let's go on to a Pareto chart, ostensibly named so by a guy named John Smith. I'm kidding. It's got to be something named Pareto, right? That's the craziest chart ever. All that a Pareto chart is, is it's a bar graph or a histogram where notice, what do you notice about the shape of these curves? Look at that. See, what they're doing is they're listing the classes from increasing to decreasing. So something like, I don't know, uh, the amount of money that the movies are going to make this summer in 2012. You know, so I don't know, the, the, what's the biggie? Oh, uh, Prometheans, or Prometheus is going to make a ton of money. There's no Harry Potter this year, otherwise that would probably win. And then it, it, it always goes in descending order. All right. That's, that is the one characteristic of a chart that makes it a Pareto chart. Now, there is something else that I want you to notice here. I'm going to go ahead and erase this really quickly because the, it, there's, a nut, there's a hidden curve in here that I really want you to look at. Um, look at this curve right here. This is pretty cool. Notice that it goes right there and right there and right there and right there and right there. And right there, all right, and then up here. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna sit on this thing for a second, and then I'm gonna stretch it out for us, so we can get a really good look at it. Notice what's happening. Oop, it looks like my writing stayed home. Oop, sorry about that, you guys. Notice what's happening. This curve right here has got the strangest name ever. It's called an ogive. And what it is 
is it's the cumulative frequency of each one of the classes. You can do an ogive on a standard issue histogram. You can do it on a bar graph if it's, if it's quantitative, or you can do it on a Pareto chart. And notice from here to here, so, oh, let's see. This is, it looks like traffic. Let's say Pareto chart of late arrivals by reported cause. So I show up late to work because of traffic. Apparently 30.4, I don't know if it's, I don't know what that number is, but apparently somewhere around 33% of all people showed up late because, or reportedly showed up late because of traffic. Child care is at uh, just under 30%, it appears. However, the two together make up over 60%. Public transportation. Uh, yeah, the bus showed up late, whatever, just under 20%. But the three of these together make up just under 80% of all reported reasons for being late to work. Weather, well, I live in Reno, so weather plays a big part, especially if it's snowing. Weather uh, is a little over 10% right there. If I were to drag this thing across, it would be a little over 10%. However, up here, between traffic, child care, public transportation, and weather, we pick up 90% of all reported, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how an ogive works, is it basically gives you the, the cumulative relative frequencies of the occurrence of certain things. 